Ooh, it's pretty cool down here in Adelaide and the wind is like just getting right through you. So hence why I'm all dressed up warm today, sporting the new dash beanie. <sighs> this one's all about airbags and suspension. Yeah, I talk a lot about Y62 patrols, but this could be related to probably any car. And we do heaps of suspension, like basically every box on this bottom shelf right to the door is some sort of suspension, whether it's, um, uh, we do Tough Dog, Old Man Emu, uh, this is all the, the on-track stuff here. Um, lots of airbags, upper control arms, you name it. We do heaps of suspension, and next door in 4x4 DNA, we, um, we see all sorts, we fit it all up. So this starts with a bit of a, a story, and this would relate to a lot of um, people out there, like especially the travellers that are towing. They, they go and buy a Y62 patrol because you want to, um, I don't know, do a big lap or tow your caravan or, or whatever. Um, and when you look at the brochure from Nissan, it says that you can tow three and a half tonne uh, and you go out and buy a three and a half tonne caravan. Uh, it's not as simple as that, I'm afraid. And all of the, um, um, not mistakes, but just, I guess, um, misinform people about what to do with their suspension with vehicles and towing come through here and we, we get the opportunity to fix them up. So um, what happens is you go get your car and uh, you go and put a, uh, your big caravan on uh, and it, it drops in, in the arse. Um, so like, ah, oh, I need to get airbags. But I can tell you if you fit airbags to the standard Nissan suspension, it won't work. In fact, it can have catastro catastrophic failures like have a bit of a squeeze at this airbag that came in. This came out of a car um, that um, was, I think had, yeah, it was over 300 kilo on the ball uh, and um, they just had the, the standard Nissan coils, like these, these little black ones here. Um, it, it just doesn't cut it. I, Steve and I have been talking about this and thinking about making up a rule like what kilo on the ball and what these springs can kind of take. And I swear that the Nissan Springs, even if you put the seven or eight pieces, like there's seats in there to take, those coils still don't cut it. Um, you need at least airbags because um, the springs take the bolted mass. So the weight of your car, bolted mass, that's what the coils do. And for just the car alone, the Nissan, those black coils are fine. But as soon as you put unbolted mass on there, that's when, um, th that's people, that's your fridge, your beer, uh, your towable weight. As soon as you put unbolted mass into your vehicle, that's where you need some sort of help, probably from an airbag. Um, we've been trying to think of a, a kilo range of, you know, how much unbolted mass you can put on with each sort of coil. Um, because what happens is uh, people will put the airbags in, um, in their standard coil, put 150 kilos, 200 kilos on the ball, and it doesn't work. Uh, so then you have to upgrade to like a King's coil. Um, and like, if we do a bit of a, so th this is a King's coil here, by the way, um, the yellow ones. I wanna get a little bit scientific here and look at, I'm not gonna get into free height or wrap, but I'm just gonna talk about coil, I'm just gonna wire thickness, cause that will, that will get us part way into this story. So the Nissan coil wire is, I'm measuring at 18, can you see it there? 18.7 millimeters. The King coils are 20.7. So straight up, they're significantly more. And that means you can tow, uh, you can put more on the ball with the airbags and it will help much more. Just that wire thickness alone stiffens it up a little bit. It doesn't change the ride that much, to be honest, but um, it helps when you put, I'm gonna make it up, I'm gonna say 150 kilos on the ball for a King's coil works fine. When you go over 150 kilos, um, things start to misbehave. Uh, and what, what happens, I'm gonna put the calipers down for a second, turn them off. What do you do when things misbehave? Well, you go and pump the airbags up more than you probably need to, you overinflate them. Like you're putting, you know, right up to their maximum 60 PSI into them. Um, and that starts torturing things. But you still, and especially with some of these um, smaller airbags that are in the market, they don't give the height back. They help with spring rate, but not height. And 
Um, so what, what do you do next to try and firm the ride up? You pump your tyres up to like 55 psi as well. So when you've got very hard tyres, very hard coil, the shock absorber can't do its job. The HBMC or any shock absorber, because um, it's not moving, so it can't absorb anything. Uh, everything is stiff and your car becomes a jackhammer. It probably rides like garbage, but this happens too. Or well, one, you can get blowouts because <coughs> the bag just can't take it. Two, um, this is the top hat. So these are actually airbag man, but I'm not saying this is a, a poor product by any means. This was the person that was using this just, it was misuse basically. It looks like, you know, someone's dog ate that for breakfast. And even, so that's the top, this is the bottom. Look at this, it's all deformed. Like this has really had some abuse. I'm not sure if you can appreciate that on camera, but like looking at it from here, it does. It looks like, you know, a pit bull has gone to town on this for a week. Um, and the reason for it, it's just that, that jackhammer effect. If the tire isn't bouncing, the shock absorber isn't moving, so that can't absorb anything. The next thing in line, whatever's softest, is going to become the absorber. In this particular situation, it was um, that top hat. Um, so, <coughs> it makes you think though, um, what's next in line? And that's the lower control arm. Uh, we know that these are made of pressed steel from Nissan. They're not that strong. We've seen failures. And what happens is they'll fatigue over time and your wheel won't be fine. Then all of a sudden, all you do is you go up a gutter or a curb or your driveway, boom, your wheel goes out. Um, the ones that we've seen break and fold in on themselves have happened in the oddest locations just because it fatigued over time and then happened. Now, start talking about the, the bigger people that are towing, you know, right up to that 300, 350. To be honest, and I was having a chat with Andrew Kasser this morning, um, if, if you've bought a Y62 Patrol, to tow a three and a half ton caravan with 350 on the ball, you bought the wrong car. It doesn't do it. It just, it's too much um, because you get stuff like that happening. Um, there's not a lot of coils on the market for standard height that are stiffer than what those Kings are, but really they run out at, I don't know, I'm gonna say 150, maybe 200 kilos. Um, then you need something stiffer again, but there hasn't been anything in the market. Um, so, oh. Before I go into the next bit, what do you do? Well, you need to go up in wire size again. So, um, you know, for reference, we were saying that, uh, we'll just, uh, I'm repeating myself here, but we were saying that the uh, standard Nissan was 18.7, the Kings was 20.6. Um, so this is the tough dog cores, we use heaps of these, 20.9, so it's that little bit thicker again. Oh no, my calipers are starting to die. Um, I swear each time I measure I'm getting a slightly different measurement. But um, So what you end up having to do is going up to that next sort of level again. So um, you probably have to raise the car all the way around. Uh, which is going to help for towing because when you put a coil at the front of the car it does take some of that weight that the vehicle's got and it tends to, um, I reckon I can do probably 10 k's an hour faster with um, the coil lifted car that I've got compared to like just the standard Nissan coils when I'm towing. Uh, we really need a product out there which is going to be um, standard height or thicker again without raising the height of the car too much. And really the only way you can do that is um, with thicker wire. Uh, performance wise, you can put less, less wraps in it. So that means less comfort, but it will take weight better when you do it. Uh, and like we have listened to that and started looking at creating our own coil. Uh, these aren't really available yet, but one day they will be. Um, there's gonna be a standard height, one inch and two inch. So that's going up to 22 mil. Um, so it's that little bit thicker again. And I've been running these in my car for almost a year now, I reckon. Uh, and I reckon this is the solution. I just haven't got stock to make this commercially available yet, but it, it will happen. And I think this is what we're going to have to do with these cars that have really heavy um, tow ball. We're going to need one coil um, for you know moderate towing use. But those big heavy vans that are out there, we're going to need something bigger and better. You've either got to do a suspension tough dog in or um, 
uh, all will have our dash coil out at various heights, be um, standard height and one inch. All right, airbags. So <laughs> this is almost a bit controversial to be honest. Uh, I guess in the market, the two most common types are the, um, the airbag man and the poly air. That's a bad example. Let's get a brand new one out here. All right, poly air, you know, for better or worse, they're about the same height. Um, they're about, for raised applications, they aren't big enough. Um, definitely need to go for the jumbo airbags, which are that, that bit higher. We've been using them heaps and they work well. So any Tough Dog Suspension Old Man Emu, we go straight to them. Uh, having a discussion with Airbag Man now, whether we should be putting the, the jumbos into a standard height. Uh, at the moment, um, well, I guess we're in a validating stage with that. I'm all for it. Uh, tough Dog, uh, Airbag Man, I, I'm sure they, they need to see it in the market for a longer time. Um, but that gives opportunity for other manufacturers to come in and do stuff. So um, I was supposed to have one here to show you, but it hasn't arrived yet. But Polyair will have a, an airbag that size um, that we're going to be doing some testing on soon. But I think this is going to be what seals the deal. So this is, it's basically a truck airbag, a bellow airbag. Um, you know, these sorts of airbags can pump up to 60 PSI and they help. This is a coil replacement. So we'll get rid of the coils altogether. We'll use these bellow style airbags and they're thick. You know, this is what trucks use. You can put like a thousand PSI in them. I might be exaggerating there, but I think this is what's going to be the way to go in the future. I'm going to put these in my car soon to test them out. Um, there's a heap of stuff we've got to go through with engineering and ADR and working with OnTrack who supply these um, on how that's going to happen because you need to have um, like an auto leveling otherwise uh, an engineer isn't going to sign off on it but the good news is you'll be able to get bigger GVM upgrades um, without having to add the weight to the car first which is what you have to do for a more mechanical um, coil type GVM upgrade. So that is very interesting and you know if it gets over the line I reckon this is going to be the thing. Um, don't mind all my other gold billet bits going on my car. I've got a bit of a gold theme happening on my car at the moment but yeah this is going to be brilliant. Big strong top hat. Um, billet lower arm so that's not going to crack. This you can change the height uh, of the vehicle and you can change the weight of the vehicle and adjust it on the fly or have self leveling and it will be the nail in the coffin I believe. I've just got to wait time and as of uh, where are we end of May now it, it, I guess there's limited commercial availability but I bet six months from now there'll be heaps of them. Right this car behind me this is one where those like destroyed <laughs> airbags that got destroyed came out of so hopefully you can hear me over the compressor and the HPMC machine over here but have a look how this one sits. This sits beautifully. I'll tell you what we put in it in a minute, but the eyebrow height at the front uh, is sitting at 555, so it's gone up 25 mil or so. Eyebrow height at the back is sitting at 570, and so it's 15 mil higher in the back. So we've got some rake to it, and we actually want some rake to it because there's so much towing that we're doing. All right, what are the parts that we used? All right, this is a tough dog, tough dog um, coil at the front, so. That's what this machine's doing over here, by the way. Um, we're pulling, uh, we're actually recharging the HBMT pressure in this one. In the, in the box there, there's the machine that does it. But, so what do we put in here? Parts, I'll tell you the exact parts, because this is going to tow like a dream now. Um, in the front, Tough Dog uh, 790Ls we put in, and in the back, we put the 795Ls. Now, for those of you that are big on part numbers um, will know that the 790, 795L is actually for 150 to 300 kilos and usually raises the car way too much of the back and you can't get wheel alignment. That is generally the case, but when you do the billet arms, that is no longer an issue because the, the billet arms from on track are a bit longer than the normal ones and that's how you can get alignment. So this is like the perfect tow package. This guy's got over 350 kilos on the ball with the jumbo airbags, the right coils in the back, the way it's slightly raked. This is the perfect setup for your heavy towing vehicle. We're gonna have to stop doing 
um, the jumbos into the kings or really anyone that's towing more than I don't know 150 200 kilos on the bull kind of this is what you're gonna have to do if you want it done properly and if you want you can get this engineered to give you an extra 300 kilos uh, of your um, <laughs> it's been a long day <laughs> um, of your GVM as well all right That's my story about suspension coils, airbags. I guess more so for the Y62, um, but relevant to all of you. I'll fit this stuff up over the next, I don't know, week or two, and go out and do some real world testing. I think for off-roading, that's what I'm really interested in, these airbags. Uh, if we join the two airbags together, that means one can completely flatten, uh, whilst the other one, you know, as you're articulating, so I'm gonna get more tuck up. Um, so there could be some advantages for off-roading too. So anyway, I'll go and fiddle this stuff up and um, we'll come back to you on what it's going to be like in, in real life testing. All right, thanks for watching again. See you next time on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.